It's an opportunity for providers of care, but ultimately we all know that it's really an opportunity for patients as well. Uh, any of you who currently use electronic health records, no matter how frustrated you are with them at times, also know that, I, and I'm quite confident of this, that you don't want to go back to paper as the means by which you record, collect, manage, transfer, share information. I certainly went through that transition myself uh, at uh, MGH, Mass General, 10 years ago. Uh, I became an electronic health record user. It wasn't anything I was looking to do, uh, like looking around this audience, seeing some gray hair scattered around. Uh, I know that a lot of you were trained like I was in the paper world. Uh, and I was very happy with those paper prescriptions, the x-ray requisitions that had to be torn into three pieces of paper that went somewhere in the hospital. I never knew where. Uh, I, was, I was happy uh, ordering all those tests on a paper, on a piece of paper, often multiple pieces of paper. Uh, but the thing about getting uh, on in years in a profession is that you find you have younger colleagues. Uh, and my younger colleagues started using the electronic health record and pretty soon I felt I couldn't hold my head up in my 14 member group unless I was able to do it as well. And so I learned, uh, it was hard, I learned, and I found that it was making me a better doctor. Uh, I was practicing medicine differently and I was more capable for my patients, more capable in terms of my knowledge of their medications, in terms of my knowledge of their test results, their problems. During my weekends on call, I actually had some information about the patients who would call me in the middle of the night instead of being dependent on them to fill in all the blanks. That is I really, I think, why this conversion is inevitable. It is because its benefits for patients are so persuasive. Uh, and that is why I think that as doctors and hospitals and other clinicians think about their future in medicine and ask themselves, am I going to finish my career without making this transition? I think the great, great majority will say, no, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that 10 or 20 or even 30 years from now, I will still be living in a paper world. And that is why I think this opportunity, this one-time, time-limited opportunity is so important. Because you can make that transition now with help, or you can make it later without help. Uh, and I think that's a persuasive value proposition I hope for most folks. Information and its management is a core competency for professions. It's what distinguishes us as a skilled, learned group of professionals. It's our ability to find that information, process it, and use it. So can we be technically competent if we don't manage information using the most capable and available technologies. If we can know our drug, the drug allergies of our patients, but we choose not to, are we still competent professionals? If we can know their problem lists, know all their problems, and we choose not to, are we still competent professionals? Uh, if we can know what their previous anesthesia experience is, with reliability, but choose not to, are we still competent professionals? Those capabilities are available through the electronic health information systems that we're trying to build. So the choice not to participate in that network is a choice not to know things that you could know for your patient's benefit. I don't think that's I don't think that's sustainable in a professional model. 
And that's why I'm convinced that professional organizations like the Mass Medical Society and like the certifying boards for specialties and like licensure boards are going to be major players in the encouragement of the spread of electronic health records.